Well, hello and welcome to another Hardcore Nuzlocke. Today I want to attempt a run of Pokemon Platinum, but instead of using a monotype team, today we are going to look at the Dragon Egg Breeding Group and see if we can build a team from that and beat the entirety of Pokemon Platinum. Generation 2 introduced a new mechanic that would forever change the Pokemon games called Breeding. And with the Breeding, there was egg groups. Now I don't know a whole heck of a lot when it comes to breeding because like most people I just use a ditto. I wasn't really trying to get IVs or certain stats or even certain moves. There was a time in Pokemon Emerald where I did breed for a Sableye that had the move recover, but other than that it's always been a ditto. There are a lot of different egg groups, and certain Pokemon can breed with other Pokemon from that egg groups. You don't always have to have a Charizard breeding with a Charizard to get a Charmander, basically. We're not going to dive into the mechanics of it because that's not important to our Nuzlocke run. What is important is the Dragon Egg Group. This is a highly requested video from you guys. And looking at the Dragon Egg Group here in Generation 4, we have 11 encounters. They are Charmander, Ekans, Horsey, Magikarp, Dratini, Trico, Swablu, Saviper, Feebas, Bagon, and Gibble. Now some of you may be running to your keyboard right now going, well, Zap, actually, you forgot Trapinch. Trapinch is a dragon Pokemon too. Yes, I know, Trapinch is a dragon Pokemon, and wee -oo, wee -oo, wee -oo, the Nuzlocke police are out first thing in the morning, but you need to check Bulbapedia because Trapinch is not in the dragon egg group until generation 8. I don't know why, that's just the way it is. Nonetheless, we do have a fair few encounters here, 11 of them, that is a nice group of Pokemon we can build a team from. Unfortunately, we're not going to be able to use all of them because we can only have 6 Pokemon. I'm excited. Some of these Pokemon I've used before and some of them I have not, so I can't wait to see how some of these do in Generation 4 because I've never used them in this game. So, without further ado, let's start getting into this run. Just like in every other single run that I've ever done, a Hardcore Nuzlocke, we named our rival Algorithm. Because why? You guys know why. That's what we are trying to beat both in real life and in game, is our rival Algorithm. You guys have been helping out tremendously to beat the algorithm in real life, but if you want to continue to help, hit that like button, leave a comment, and consider subscribing if you're new to the channel. Even if you're not new to the channel, check to see if you're subscribed. A few people have checked and have not been subscribed. Of course, a couple people have gotten mad at me because they said you sound like a big YouTuber and you're fishing for subscriptions. And I'm sorry that I'm trying to grow my channel and turn this from a hobby into some money strike me down. Nonetheless, our rival algorithm is a goofy goofy hyper person in this game and that's not how I am in real life, but if I was more like Algol in real life, I think this channel would be at 100,000 subscribers. You guys, YouTube, not you guys in particular, but YouTube, the audience typically likes the over-the-top, eccentric, annoying, personalities and I'm just not that way. We're going to continue to do things the chill way and play some Pokemon. Of course none of the starters fit the dragon egg group so I put all of the encounters in numerical order, hit the random number generator and it spat out for us Trico. I know that does give us the type advantage against Rourke but really these are some really good encounters and I don't think we would have had a hard time with Rourke nonetheless. Trico does level out kind of mid game, gets better towards the end game but I am excited to use this thing because it was kind of terrible in Gen 3. So let's meet our starter, Tony the Trico. Now just like in every other run that I do, I also put a name theme. It's the interactive part of the episode where you guys try to guess it. It's going to be a little bit difficult this run, but I think you guys can get it. Some old school gamers might understand the name theme as the Pokemon come, and of course later on in the video I will show off what it is. Now, Trico has a Brave plus attack minus speed nature. The minus speed is never great, and the plus attack is not good here in the early game where most of our moves will be special, but eventually it will work in our favor. In the past, I've talked a little bit about my life, work schedules, and craziness that ensues, and how I do this as kind of a hobby. I did get a comment in the last episode saying 
that it might not resonate with the younger generation or younger people, but the elder or older people, adults, basically, it might resonate with them, and the specific individual really liked some of the storytelling. Now, what I want to do for you is break down how my work week went. It has been chaotic, and it is 8 o'clock in the morning. I am voicing this over. It's Sunday, the day that this video needs to come out, and I am on clip number, like, 5. So whilst I was on vacation, the job I was on ended last week, before the ICE video came out. Monday, I went into the shop, that's what we do, we go talk to the project managers and we try to find a new home to go to. Sometimes we sit at the shop and do things there, there's always something to do, they like to keep me busy, I like to stay busy. We went in and talked to the project manager who didn't really have an idea, and so we just kind of hung out for a little bit. You know, running around, doing a couple of things, There was, there's always something to do. But nonetheless, we got told, all right, we're going to go to this specific job. They're working 10 hours a day, and they, there's some badging that has to be completed. It should be completed within the time frame of Monday, and this way we can start Tuesday morning. So we head home, and we're expecting a phone call from the project manager of that job. He does call later in the afternoon saying that the badging did not quite go through, and we're going to have to just go to the shop and do a little bit of prefab until the badges are complete, and then we will go to the job. So Tuesday morning, we go to the shop. They want us to cut up some material and prep some uh, what we call racks for hanging pipe, and... The guy tells us it's going to probably take us a couple of days. It was a lot of pieces, and it's all stainless steel, which is really hard. If you don't know about cutting stainless steel, it takes special blades. It takes special oil. Milk of Magnesia is really good for cutting stainless steel or using water. Anyway, the guy said he thought it would take us two days to cut all of this material. It took us four hours. <laughs> and so anyway they weren't working Wednesday because Wednesday was the Juneteenth holiday so now we haven't worked barely any on Monday we worked a little bit on Tuesday no work on Wednesday during all of this on Tuesday I was stopped by an individual who wanted me to help them with an overnight shutdown at the hospital Friday night which I had no problem with it was going to start at 9 p.m. and go till 3 a.m. Also, once the project manager of that shutdown found out I was available, he was like, oh, I can actually use you on this other job. So, he goes and talks to the other project manager, and now it's up in the air. Am I going to the first job that I was supposed to, working 10 hours a day, not working Wednesday, or am I going to go to this other job, working 8 hours a day, and work Wednesday? It was all up in the air until the end of day Tuesday, and as it turns out, I went to the first job, so I didn't have any work on Wednesday. Wednesday in the afternoon, I did go do the walk down for the hospital shutdown. We went to work Thursday, we went to work Friday, and then Friday night, I went to work for the shutdown. Working these 10-hour days on Thursday and Friday cut into my morning because instead of starting at 7 a.m., we start at 6 a.m., so I lose an hour there. Technically, I'll gain a Friday next week, but not this week. And then working the shutdown from 9 a.m. or 9 p.m. to 3 a.m. cut into my Saturday morning recording time because, well, I'm at work. It's been chaos. So that's enough of me waffling on. I just wanted to tell you guys you know, a short little thing about how work schedules can be crazy. It's time to get further into this run. Now, just like in the ice type run, all of these Pokemon are in eggs, but there are 11 encounters, so I'm going to allow for another hatch before we get to Rourke. After every gym leader, we're going to hatch an egg. We're going to hatch a couple right off the bat here at the beginning so that we have a decent little team, and then we will float through the eggs every gym after that. I don't think this is going to gain us an advantage. Tony is going to be able to take out Rourke on its own, but... I want to hatch another Pokemon. So after a lot of running around, we do hatch another egg finally, and it is an Ekans. Okay, I'll take Ekans. Mm, why not? We of course are going to nickname this thing, and we are going to nickname this Ekans a Carrera. 
Can anybody guess the name theme yet? Maybe not. Nonetheless, I've never really used Ekans that much. I had it on the team in the Poison type run, and it is not great in Generation 3. We'll see how it does here in Gen 4. It does have a hasty plus speed minus defense nature, so that's nice. Has the Intimidate ability, which is phenomenal. That right there, A1, A plus Pokemon. Leaving Jubilife, we have a rival battle with Algo. This is a very easy battle, and I I, I want to believe it's coded to where you can't lose it because Starly and the starter typically like to use Growl and Leer and things like that, making it very hard for us to lose the battle. Now, I have been training Tony in special attack EVs, and Carrera has been fighting Wild Shinx for attack EVs. Bite is physical in this game and does a lot of damage to Starly, but we do get hit with a Growl. We do get out prioritized with a quick attack the very next turn, but one more bite is enough to take out the Starly. Chimchar comes out, and this thing is not fighting, so we can hit it with a bite that does a decent amount of damage, and we get the flinch. It's looking to be about a three shot as well. We don't get a flinch on the second go round, and we just get tagged with a leer to lower our defense, so one more bite seals the fate, and we win the battle. So the first gym leader is Leader Rourke. Now, why do you think he's wearing a helmet? Like I get when he was down in the mines, you want to wear a hard hat, PPE. But inside the building, do you think it's to keep him from licking the windows? Anyway, Geodude is a rock ground Pokemon, so Absorb is quad super effective. And even with a 20 base power, it is enough to one shot the Geodude. This brings out Onyx. And though Onyx is a speedy boy, and despite our minus speed nature, we do outspeed it and can take it out with a quad super effective absorb. Last for Rourke is his ace, Kranidos. Kranidos has one of the highest attack stats in the game, and it is only a rock type Pokemon. So we fire off that base 20 power absorb, and it doesn't quite do half. Kranidos also goes for Leer, which is very scary. We do decide to go for a quick attack the next turn to try to do some chip damage, and it doesn't do a lot. I, I want to two-shot this thing, but I don't think we can do enough with Headbutt taking us all the way down to 11 HP. Now, I did trade the Machop for the Abra to get the Orin Berry, so that brings us back up to 21 HP. Rourke then goes for a Potion, so now we can get back-to-back -back Absorbs off, taking this thing down to low red health and bringing us back up almost to full health. We get hit with another headbutt down to 8 HP and that was almost a loss in our books. Rourke does not heal, we fire off another absorb and we win ourselves the first gym badge. As a reward we have our very first evolution of the team. Tony evolves into a beastly Grovile. Now as I said before this is where Grovile kind of plateaus for a little while. I love having the addition to the team, but grass type Pokemon. That's all I'm going to say. I go ahead and grab another egg from the box, and this one hatches into a Magikarp. Okay. You know, Gyarados is an amazing Pokemon. You guys all know this. We're going to go ahead and nickname our Magikarp Bob. Can you guys guess the name theme yet? Maybe not. Let's go ahead and take a look at Bob and see what it's got. It has a quirky neutral nature. I'll take it. This thing can't learn any egg moves, so that's it. It has a quirky nature. I grab one more egg from the box. This is the only other time we're going to do a dual hatch, and this one is a Subviper. Amazing. Going forward, it's going to be one egg after every single gym. This gives us a nice little team, and I am going to nickname the Surviper Jamie. Again, Tony, Bob, Jamie, Carrera, anybody? Jamie has a docile, neutral nature. Again, I'll take the neutral nature, not plus, not minus, that's great. The other great thing about this Pokemon is it does have its egg move, Night Slash. Now I was going to wait till I got to Eterna Force to do a bunch of training, but that's not until after we have to fight Commander Mars. 
Commander Mars can be quite difficult, so I did a bunch of switch training and grinding to get Bob to level 20 so that it evolves into Gyarados. This is a beastly Pokemon and is going to make the Commander Mars battle, well, trivial. The Commander Mars battle inside of the Valley Windworks is notorious for ending a lot of hardcore Nuzlocke runs because her Perugly is a beast of a Pokemon. Triple threat, man. It hits hard, it's fast, and it's ugly. Zubat is none of those things. As a matter of fact, it goes down to a single bite. This brings out the Perugly. It's sitting at level 17 too. So if you're not training up your Pokemon, not prepared for this battle, it can be quite difficult. I swap into Carrera to get off the first Intimidate and we get hit with a Fake Out on the swap. I then immediately swap into Bob for a second Intimidate and we get hit with a very weak Scratch. We then get outsped because Perugly is fast and we get hit with a very weak Faint Attack and fire off a Bite that surprisingly does over half. Perugly has a Ornberry though that heals it up just a little bit. We get hit with another faint attack for very minimal damage, and we take this thing down to low red health with another bite. One more faint attack for very little damage puts us at 53 HP, and we take it out with one more bite. Making your way to Eterna Forest, you can run into this lady named Cheryl. She wants to go with you through the entirety of the forest because she's worried about Forest, Team Galactic, all kinds of different stuff. What's great is she heals your Pokemon's health and power points after every single battle. So this is a very great place to train early game to gain a lot of levels. The Pokemon are low levels, but there are some trainer battles, and we can grind all of our Pokemon up to at least level 20 fairly easy. Later in the game, there is another spot where you can do this with Riley on the Iron Islands, it's a great thing to do, I just wanted to show it off because I'm going to spend a bunch of time in here grinding for the next gym because Pokemon like Jamie here are kind of low level, level 13. If you guys don't know, in Eterna City, behind the statue, you can find a hidden Draco plate. This may come in handy later for some of the dragons, I just wanted to show that. Right before we take on the gym, we have another evolution with Carrera evolving into a beastly Arbok. That is amazing. Against Gardenia, I do have two Poison-type Pokemon. I have Gyarados that's a Flying-type, but it doesn't learn any Flying-type moves. It can't even learn Roost. Now between Jamie and Carrera, Jamie has the stronger move with Poison Tail. So I fire off a Poison Tail turn 1, and Turtwig actually tanks it on a sliver of health. That's annoying because Turtwig then sets up the Reflect, and Gardenia goes for a Super Potion. But because of the heal, we can get back-to-back -back Poison Tails to take out the Turtwig. Out next is Cherim. Cherim outspeeds us and tags us with a Leech Seed, which is very annoying. Poison Tail does a decent amount of damage despite the Reflect, but I don't want to deal with the heal up from Leech Seed, so I swap into Carrera. Cherim just goes for a Safeguard on the swap, which is nice. And then we fire off an Acid that does a very decent amount of damage to Cherim, but we get tagged once again with Leech Seed. I could take this thing out with one more Acid, but I don't want to deal with Leech Seed, so I swap again into Jamie. We get hit with a Grass Knot on the swap in that's not very effective, and we get outsped and hit with another Grass Knot that takes us down to 37 HP. We fire off a Poison Tail, the Reflect has faded, and we can take out the Cherim. This brings out Rose Raid. Rose Raid outspeeds us and hits us with a not very effective Grass Knot down to 16 HP, and Night Slash does right at half health for Rose Raid. Unfortunately, I don't think I can tank another Grass Knot, so we need to swap. I swap into Tony, thinking we can do something. We resist Grass Knot, and we can maybe fire off some Fury Cutters, I don't know. We do get hit with a Magical Leaf that again is not very effective, and Fury Cutter does connect, but it doesn't do anything. It just takes Rose Raid into its Citrus Berry Healing Rain. We get hit with another Magical Leaf, down to 22 HP, and I get off another Fury Cutter that doesn't do a lot of damage. I think I can resist one more Magical Leaf, which we do with 7 HP, and Fury Cutter takes this thing back down to low yellow health. I can't stay in, so I swap into Carrera that gets hit with a Magical Leaf on the swap in down to 43 HP. 
We get outsped and hit with a grass knot down to 25 HP, and I get off the glare. I shouldn't even even messed with the glare, I should have just fired off a crunch because we outspeed it and take it out with a crunch the very next turn. We grab another egg from the box and we run around and hatch this thing and it is a Bagon. Bagon? Bagon? I don't know. This is our first official dragon Pokemon, but this isn't a dragon run, it's dragon egg, right? I'm going to nickname this thing Kareem. Anybody? Anybody got the name theme yet? Kareem, let's take a look at it, has a mild plus special attack nature. Mm, this thing's not a special attacker. It does have Rock Head, and it has the Egg Move Shadow Claw. Welcome addition to the team. The Commander Jupiter battle is typically not as difficult as the Commander Mars battle. Skunk Tank is not as beastly as Perugly, but just... She leads with Zubat, and I lead with Carrera. We get the Intimidate drop, which doesn't really matter. We fire off a Crunch and it does about three quarter of Zubat's health. So we tank a fairly weak wing attack and take it out with another Crunch. This brings out Skunk Tank. Skunk Tank, we unfortunately miss our Glare and it tags us with a Smoke Screen. We do get off a Glare the very next turn, but Skunk Tank breaks through the Paralysis and hits us with a very beastly Night Slash down to 24 HP. I have to swap. There's nothing I can do. So I swap into Bob to get that Intimidate drop off, and Skunk Tank hits us with a fairly weak Night Slash. I then pivot into Tony, who tanks a Smoke Screen, just to pivot back into Bob for the double Intimidate, and Skunk Tank misses Poison Gas. I then decide to fire off a Bite to see how much damage it'll do, and it doesn't do a lot of damage. Skunk Tank stays paralyzed, so I fire off a Tackle. It does a little bit more damage, but it's not doing a lot. I get hit with another Night Slash. I don't want to tank a lot of damage with this Pokemon, so I swap into Tony. Tony comes out, Skunk Tank stays paralyzed, and then I start trying something. Fury Cutter doesn't do a lot of damage despite it being a crit. Poison Gas misses. Fury Cutter misses. Skunk Tank stays paralyzed. I go for Absorb, it doesn't do a lot, we get hit with a Night Slash that does a, a decent little bit of damage, another Absorb takes this thing down to about half health, we get hit with a Night Slash down to 29 HP, I go for Absorb taking this thing down into yellow health, eventually activating its Citrus Berry. Obviously Tony can't do much in this battle, so I decide to swap into Jamie. We get hit with a Night Slash on the Swap In, and it does still do a decent amount of damage, and I go for Rock Smash. Rock Smash does decent damage and does get the Defense Drop, which is amazing, but we get tagged with a Defense Drop of our own in Screech, so I need to pivot out, and I just go pivot into Bob for another Intimidate, tank a Night Slash, pivot back into Jamie, tanking a Night Slash on the Pivot In, and we fire off a Rock Smash. We get hit with a smoke screen, but one more rock smash finally takes this thing out, winning us a very long and tedious battle. After the Team Galactic stuff, you can get your bike, head south out of Eterna and talk to this guy right here before you get to the cycling road, and he will give you the experience share. This thing is going to be an amazing item for us. We need this for a lot of these different Pokemon. Um, According to the Pokedex, we have seen 42 and obtained 7 Pokemon, so it counts both of those to get the total. 49 was enough to get the key item, the experience share. So we're going to use this to level up our Pokemon going forward. The grind to get to Hard Home City is just amazing. Kira's Buneary runs into us outside of Hard Home, and that directs us to the contest hall here. It's just the game telling us where to go next. We have to talk to our mom, we have to talk to Kira here, and then of course you see this weird sprite to your right. We don't know who it is, but we need to go talk to her because of course that is Fantina. Pokemon Platinum. It's just, it is what it is. The grind in this game from area to area is just insane. These runs take so long. Now Fantina is going to be probably one of the easiest gym leaders we have to face. She's got ghost type Pokemon. Her Miss Magius does have Psybeam. 
but I decided to lead with Carrera against her Duskull because it has the super effective move Crunch. It's a very strong move as well. As a matter of fact, Crunch is enough to cleanly one-shot the Duskull. This does bring out Miss Magius next, which is what I wanted, and I know we can tank one Psybeam from this Pokemon, so we stay in, we tank a Psybeam to the face. Luckily it didn't crit, we would have survived even if it had crit, but it does get the confusion. We do break through confusion and tag Miss Magius with a glare, which is amazing. We can then pivot into Bob. The Intimidate drop doesn't really matter, that's not what we're doing here. Miss Magius does stay paralyzed and we can start firing off Bites. Bites takes Miss Magius all the way down to low red health. Luckily for us, all of these gym leaders have berries, so the Citrus Berry pulls this thing out of healing range. We get hit with a fairly weak Shadow Ball, and we can take it out with one more Bite. This brings out her last Pokemon Haunter. Unfortunately for her, Haunter's not very strong, and a single Bite takes it out, winning us a very easy third gym. We grab our next egg from the box and do some running around, and this thing hatches into a Charmander. Oh man, I love Charmander. Isn't this the game where Charizard has the weird neck? We're, we're gonna find out. <laughs> I name our Charmander Rune. Again, can you guys get the name theme yet? Mm, it's, it's difficult, it really is. Rune has... A quirky neutral nature. Ah, what's with all the neutral natures? I'll take them. I'm not complaining. Leaving hard home, we have a rival battle with Algo. I'm prepared for this battle this time. There's been a couple of times this one caught me off guard. He leads with Staravia and I lead with Carrera. We get Intimidates off on one another. So for turn one, I decide to go for the non-physical move Acid and it does not quite a third. Staravia sets up a double team, which is annoying because I miss my very next attack, and we get hit with a decent little wing attack. I then fire off a crunch that does a lot of damage despite the intimidate drop and gets the defense drop, but Staravia gets a critical hit wing attack down to 9 HP. I know this thing has quick attack, so I swap into Bob. We do get hit with it quick attack like I thought, and we can take it out with a bite. This brings out for us, Buizel. I fire off a bite and it leaves Buizel on a sliver of health. I cannot believe it. We take a very weak pursuit and take the Buizel out with a bite the next turn. Out next for Algo is his Rose Raid and we hit it with a bite that leaves it in low red health and we get tagged with a Stun Spore. That's very annoying because we are outsped the next turn and we tank a Mega Drain which doesn't honestly do that much damage, and we can take out the Rosalia with one more bite. This brings out Monferno, and Monferno is a fighting type. We are outsped and hit with Flame Wheel, which we tank very well, and we fire off a Dragon Rage instead of Bite that does surprisingly half. Little over half. We get hit with another Flame Wheel, and Paralysis doesn't matter. We hit it with another Dragon Rage, rage to win the battle. I misspoke. There goes the Nuzlocke police. Wee -oo, wee -oo, wee -oo. Whilst in the gym in Veilstone here, heading our way towards Maylene, we do have a beastly evolution from Bagon to Shelgon. This is much, much needed bulk. I'm using Bagon right now, and it is taking some serious damage, so this is a nice addition. Unfortunately, we're not going to see Salamence for a little while, but we are in Veilstone, which does give us access to some TMs, both in the department store and the game corner. So we can start adding some new moves to our, our team members here and really help us get through this gym, though we shouldn't have much of a difficult time. Originally, my strategy was going to be leading with Rune against Maylene's Metatite because it's a fire type Pokemon, but her Metatite and her Machoke have Rock Tomb. This battle with Metatite is not like the battle against Brawly, this thing actually has moves. We lead with Kareem and do some serious damage with Headbutt, well over half of its health, and we get hit with Rock Tomb. Unfortunately, that does lower our speed, so the very next turn we get hit with a Drain Punch, but it doesn't matter, Headbutt is enough to take out the Metatite. This brings out her Ace Lucario. 
So I immediately swap into Bob to get that Intimidate drop off, and Lucario hits us with a very weak Force Palm. I then decide it's worth the double Intimidate, so I swap into Carrera, who also gets hit with a very weak Force Palm, and now we can swap into Rune. Lucario hits us with a Metal Claw that doesn't do a lot of damage. We then get outsped and hit with a Drain Punch that does a decent amount of damage, but Fire Fang connects, and it does a ton of damage, leaving this thing in low red health. I'm a little nervous about what's going on here, but Maylene doesn't heal up, decides instead to go for Drain Punch to heal up some of its health, leaving Rune at 34 HP, and we connect with another Fire Fang. This is risky because Fire Fang is 95% accurate, but we take out the Lucario. This just leaves Machoke. I'm not leaving Rune in to get hit with a Rock Tomb, so I swap into Carrera, who gets the Intimidate drop off and does get hit with a Rock Tomb, as I thought. That lowers our speed, which is annoying, so I don't want to deal with that. I swap into Bob for another Intimidate, and Machoke just goes for Focus Energy. I then fire off a very strong return that does a little over half of its health, and we get hit with a Rock Tomb that is super effective. It lowers our speed, but we still outspeed the next turn to take out the Machoke with one more return. We of course grab another egg out of the box. We do a bunch of running around to hatch this thing, and it hatches into a Horsey. Horsey is not a great Pokemon, but Kingdra is a phenomenal Pokemon. Now we're going to go ahead and name Horsey Bucky. Kingdra has one weakness, and that is Dragon. Later on in Gen 6, it is weak to Fairy, of course, but it resists so many different types, being Water, Dragon. It's just a phenomenal Pokemon, eventually. Bucky does have a Naughty plus Attack minus Special Defense nature. That's not great for a future Special Attacker, but the Sniper ability is amazing, boosting its chance of critical hits. And... This thing has the Egg Move Signal Beam. Amazing. Has anybody checked on Meryl? Like, are, is it okay? Look, just look at it. It really doesn't want to be here. This is me every day at work, I swear. <laughs> I swear. Oh, you know, this is just me every day. With the level cap at level 37, we're going to have ourselves a couple of evolutions here. We've been doing a bunch of training, and the first is Bucky evolving into Seedra. Welcome addition to the team. The next evolution on the team is Rune evolving into a Charizard, and this is what I was talking about just a little while ago. I think the Gen 4 sprite has this weird long neck. Look at that thing. That is just, just weird. The last evolution on the team is Tony evolving into a Sceptile. I didn't use Sceptile on the team in my grass-only run of Pokemon Emerald because grass types leave a lot to be desired, but in Generation 4 here, this Pokemon can learn a lot of really good TMs, so it is a permanent team member. Just before entering Crash Awake's gym, we have a battle with our rival, Algo. I'm leading with the newly evolved Rune against his Staravia. I did spend a bunch of time in the underground getting shards to teach rune both fire punch and thunder punch i'm running a physical charizard which is weird because of the intimidate drop though we don't get a one shot with thunder punch staravia just get, sets off a double team and despite the plus one evasion we take it out with another thunder punch this brings out buizel we could stay in against buizel but i decide to swap out and we get hit with a pursuit on the swap meaning the ai cheats it definitely read the move Tony comes out, and we fire off a Leaf Blade that cleanly one-shots the Buizel, and this baits out Monferno. I swap into Bob, and Monferno just went for Leer, so I could have stayed in. We take out Monferno with one Aqua Tail, and last for Algo is his Rosalia. I swap back into Rune, who tanks a Magical Leaf on the swap, and then we fire off that Physical Fire Punch, one-shotting the Rosalia, winning us the rival battle. The original plan against Wake here was to lead with Tony and let Tony sweep the entirety of his team. Gyarados unfortunately has the Intimidate ability, so I don't think we could one-shot everybody, so I lead Bob. We trade Intimidates back and forth, and I swap immediately into Tony. Gyarados hits us with a bite that doesn't do a lot of damage, and I fire back with a quad super effective Thunder Punch that cleanly one-shots it because of Pokemon Law. 
This brings out Floatzel. Just before I click an attacking move, I remember this thing has Ice Fang, that's why it came out next. So I swap into Bob that gets off the Intimidate and does in fact tank an Ice Fang very well. We get outsped and hit with a decent crunch and fire back a return that does well over half of its health. Floatzel heals up with a Citrus Berry. We do get hit with another crunch, but this time it gets the defense drop. That doesn't really matter because return is enough to take out the Floatzel. This brings out Wake's last Pokemon Quagsire, so I swap back into Tony, who gets hit with a Rock Tomb on the swap. Despite the speed drop, we are still fast enough to outspeed it and take it out with a Quad Stab Super Effective Leaf Blade. We hatch another egg from the box. I did put these in numerical order. Everything is based on a random number generator, so these are random encounters. It hatches into a Dratini, which is pretty good. I've used one in the past. Takes a while to get it up to level, but it is a beastly Pokemon. I named this thing Chad. Name theme, anybody. Let's take a look at Chad here. Chad has a calm, plus special defense, minus attack nature. Mm, depends on how you want to run the Dratini. Has the Shed Skin ability and has the Egg Move Dragon Breath. This thing could be decent, but I don't know if I'm actually going to use it. In Candlelave City, we have a, another rival battle with Algo on a very safe bridge. He leads with the Star Raptor, and I lead with Bob. I'm just tanking the Intimidate from Star Raptor, trading off Intimidates. I immediately swap into Rune. Star Raptor just goes for double team. We break through the plus one evasion to hit it with a Thunder Punch, and it doesn't KO it, but it does three quarters of its health. It goes for another double team, and despite the plus two two evasion, we hit it with another Thunder Punch to take it out. This brings out Floatzel. I think I can tank its Aqua Jet, so I stay in, and we do in fact tank the Aqua Jet very well, and a single Thunder Punch from Rune is enough to take out Floatzel. Heracross is up next, but it cannot stand up to a quad stab super effective wing attack. Infernape comes out, and it actually tanks a super effective wing attack on a sliver of health. We just get hit with a fairly weak aerial ace and take it out with one more wing attack. Last but not least is his Rose Raid, who falls to a single stab super effective fire punch. Algo's not really that difficult anymore. Whilst doing some training on the Iron Islands, I decided to trade over my Cedra and finally get it to evolve into a Kingdra. Beastly Evolution. This Pokemon is a phenomenal. Fully evolved. The team's starting to round out real nice. So next up for us is Byron, the Steel-type gym trainer, and Rourke's father. Why is he wearing a dirty blanket he found in a dumpster? I'll never know. I decide to lead with a rune against Magneton despite our electrical weakness and I fire off a stab super effective fire punch that unfortunately doesn't KO the Magneton. So we get hit with a very nasty Thunderbolt down to 20 HP. Byron heals up with a Hyper Potion so I know we can hit this thing twice with fire punches but we actually take it out with the very next fire punch. So great. This baits out Bastiodon. It does have Stone Edge, so we're going to swap out immediately. Plus, we're on low health. Tony comes in and tanks the Stone Edge very well, and I fire off a Quad Super Effective Drain Punch. It does well over half of its health and heals us back almost to full. The Berry, unfortunately, brings us out of two-shot range, and it goes for Iron Defense. I fire off another Drain Punch, and it does a decent amount of damage, but not enough. It goes for another Iron Defense, so I know that I need to swap. Physical moves are not going to win. I bring out Bucky, and Bastiodon misses a Metal Burst. I hit it with a super effective Surf that takes it out. This just leaves Steelix, but of course Steelix cannot stand up to a little bit of water and falls to a single Surf from Bucky. We're getting pretty low on eggs, but I grab another one and we run around to hatch this one and it hatches into a Gibble. This is a Pokemon I have never used, so I'm very excited to use it. Fun little fact for you guys, Gibble, Gabite, and Garchomp all do not learn Earthquake via level up. It is a TM only move. So we're going to have to teach Jeff here the move for Earthquake, 
which you can actually get that TM after you beat Cardinia in the Wayward Cave. Now, Jeff has a lax plus defense minus special defense nature. It is what it is. I'm excited to use this thing. Welcome to the team, Jeff. It does have the egg move Iron Head, so eventually this thing is going to be great. After a ton of travel, we find ourselves in Snow Point City taking on the gym leader, Candace. Her ice types really don't stand a chance against our team. However, I did pack away the dragons. Tony's still on the team, but that's a just-in-case. Her lead Sneasel gets outsped and one-shot with a single fire punch from our beast of a Pokemon, Rune. Out next for Candace, surprisingly, she sends out Obama Snow. Now, Obama Snow is a bit annoying because of its snow warning ability setting up the hail. This is going to give the Frost Lass in the back a evasive boost with its snow cloak ability, but we can take out the Obama Snow with a quad super effective stab fire punch. Out next is Pillow Swine. This is what I thought would come out second because it has Stone Edge, so I swap into Bucky. However, Pillow Swine just misses its Stone Edge. We take a little bit of chip damage from Hail, and we can take out the Pillow Swine with a Stab Super Effective Surf. This just leaves Frostlass. I decide to immediately swap into Jamie. Frostlass sets up a double team. It sets up another double team because it outspeeds us, and we hit it with a crunch that does well over half of its health all the way into red health as a matter of fact. The Citrus Berry activates, pulling this thing into high yellow health. It then fires off a Psychic, taking us all the way down to 24 HP, but we break through the plus 3 evasion to take it out with one more crunch. We grab our second to last egg from the box and we hatch it into a Feebas. This is a pretty good Pokemon. Now we're going to go ahead and name it Andrew. And have you guys guessed the name theme yet? The next egg we hatch, I will reveal what it is. Let's take a look at Andrew here and see what kind of abilities it has. Ability and nature. That's what I meant. What kind of nature? It has a naive plus speed minus special defense nature. Melodic is a great, great Pokemon, but I don't know if I want to spend the time trying to evolve this thing. Between the 7th and 8th gym, there is a ton of storyline stuff. We have to listen to Cyrus's stuff here. We had to go through the Galactic HQ there in Veilstone. We eventually have to go up to the top of Mount Coronet. There's just a ton of stuff for us to do, and it is quite annoying to get through. I've heard this before. I've seen this before. So I'm just going to speed through it. But this is a cool place I've stood up in before saying stupid things. Nonetheless, we got to talk to Looker and we can then continue on. I leave Mount Cornet to do some training because my Pokemon are a bit underleveled for the upcoming battle. And Gabite evolves into Garchomp. This is Jeff's final evolution and it is a beastly one. Now, unfortunately, Kareem is still sitting in the box, so we're not going to evolve it just yet. It's time for us to take on the galactic boss Cyrus and his fully evolved team of beastly Pokemon. I lead with Bucky against the Houndoom, and we fire off a Stab Super Effective Surf that cleanly one-shots it. So far, so good. Out comes Gyarados. I know Gyarados is going to go for Earthquake, at least I think it is, so I swap into Rune. Gyarados does in fact go for Earthquake, so it misses, and we can fire off a Quad Super Effective Thunder Punch that cleanly takes out the Gyarados. Out next is Honchkrow. I could stay in, but I need room for another Pokemon, so I swap into Bob. We get off an Intimidate, and we tank a Drill Peck fairly well. We fire off an Ice Fang that doesn't quite KO the Honchkrow, and we tank another Drill Peck down to 69 HP. Nice. And Ice Fang takes out the Honchkrow. This brings out the Weavile. This is why I wanted Rune at full health. We swap him in to a Fake Out, and then we tank a Ice Punch to the face that does way more damage than I thought it would. Crap. Fire Punch does not take out the Weavile, leaving it at very low red health. Citrus Berry activates, and I have to swap, because we're outsped. Bucky gets hit with a Night Slash on the swap in down to 92 HP, and then we get outsped and hit with another Night Slash. And this one takes us all the way down to 40 HP. A Surf is enough to take out the Weavile, and this brings out Cyrus's ace and last Pokemon, Crobat. Crobat is very fast. 
I don't know why I thought I could outspeed this thing, but it hits us with a cross poison that leaves us at 1 HP. I almost lost Bucky here. Oh, we fire off an Ice Beam. And it does Son of a... It doesn't one-shot the Crobat, leaving it at a sliver. It gets the freeze, but that doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Cyrus has got a full restore. So I decide to swap into Bob. Cyrus does, in fact, go for a full restore. I get hit with an Air Slash that takes me down to 38 HP, and I fire off an Ice Fang. The Ice Fang does not do as much as the Ice Beam, leaving Crobat in middle yellow health. There's nothing else I can do. I stay in and we get hit with an air slash that takes us down to 2 HP. Whoa, man. We take out the Crobat with one more Ice Fang, and this is what I meant when I said that this battle is insane. Once we get back to the normal world, I go ahead and grab Kareem out of the box, and I evolve it into a Salamence, bringing everybody up towards the level cap of level 50. This is a beastly evolution, and one of the last ones that we will see in this run. Against the 8th and final gym leader of Sunny Shore City, Volkner, we are of course going to lead with our beastly Garchomp named Jeff. There's, there's nothing that these Pokemon can do. We do get outsped by the Jolteon and hit with an Iron Tail on turn 1, but it doesn't do a lot of damage and a stab super effective Earthquake cleanly one-shots it. And that's it. It's one-shot City from there, the Luxray goes down to a single Earthquake, out next is his Electivire, which too goes down to a single Earthquake, and then he brings out his Raichu, which never stood a chance. It does have Quick Attack, but it didn't go for it, so the only damage we took was from Iron Tail, and Raichu goes down to a single Earthquake. That is eight gym badges in our pockets. And we finally get access to the last egg that hatches into a Swablu. This is our final egg. We are going to name this thing... Alyssa. Now, if you haven't guessed the names for the name theme, all of these names are the names of the skaters from Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1. That's the name theme. Tony, Rune, Bucky. Yeah. Uh, Alyssa has a brave plus attack minus speed nature. That's not great, but it is what it is. I don't think I'm actually going to use this Pokemon. We do need to figure out a team, though, at this point. Before heading through the doors into the Elite Four, we have a rival battle with Algo. Now, I don't have the team 100% leveled up, or all of the TMs in place, or the EVs that I want, but we're going to take out the rival nonetheless. Against his intimidating Star Raptor, I lead with one of my only special attackers, Bucky. We fire off a super effective Ice Beam that cleanly one-shots the bird. Out next is Snorlax, so I swap into Tony. Tony tanks the incoming Body Slam very well, fires off a Drain Punch that does well over half of Snorlax's health, and heals us back to full. We tank another Body Slam and fire off another Drain Punch. This time it heals us back up to 143 HP, but takes out the Snorlax. Heracross comes out, we have the quad super effective move Aerial Ace, so we one-shot the Heracross. Out comes Infernape, so I swap into Kareem. We tank a Flamethrower very well, and can one-shot it with a Zen Headbutt. Next up is Floatzel. We take it out with a single Thunderfang, and this just leaves Roseraid. I swap into Rune, and Rune gets hit with a 55 accurate Grass Whistle on the swap-in. That is super annoying, because that is a very low accurate move. We stay asleep the next turn, and we get hit with a Shadow Ball that deals a decent amount of damage. Fortunately, we do wake up the very next turn, and we can take out the Rose Raid with one more Fire Punch. So here is the team, all leveled up to level 59, fully EV trained, and they have the moves that I want them to have. Rune has Fire Punch, Wing Attack, Shadow Claw, and Thunder Punch. Kareem has Thunder Fang, Shadow Claw, Zen Headbutt, and Crunch. Bucky has Surf, Signal Beam, Dragon Pulse, and Ice Beam. Jeff has Earthquake, Iron Head, Dragon Claw, and Crunch. Tony has Drain Punch, Aerial Ace, Leaf Blade, and Thunder Punch. And rounding out the team is Bob with Stone Edge, Ice Fang, Dragon Dance, and Aqua Tail. This is a very good team, and I think we have some very good matchups against the Elite Four. 
the best thing to do now is to take him on. Against Aaron, the bug type Elite Four member, I am of course going to lead with Rune. Fire against bugs, it only makes sense. Against his lead, Yan Mega, we fire off a fire punch that cleanly one shots it, but it was a critical hit, and I think that mattered. Out next is Vespa Quinn, we fire off a fire punch, and surprisingly, the Vespa Quinn tanks it on low red health. Vespa Quinn goes for defense order, which raises its defense and special defense, and Eren goes for a full restore. That doesn't really matter because two fire punches take out the Vespa Quinn. Out next is Heracross. Heracross falls to a single stab, super effective fire punch. And next is Scizor. I'm surprised Scizor came out, and this thing is going to go down to a quad super effective fire punch. This just leaves Drapion, who is not a bug type. It is dark poison. We hit it with a fire punch, and fire punch doesn't quite do half. We get hit with a very strong cross poison. And I decide to go for Thunder Punch the next turn to see what kind of damage it would do. I don't think Fire Punch can take this thing out in one more hit because Drapion heals up with a Citrus Berry. We get hit with another Cross Poison down to 75 HP, so I want to swap. And unfortunately, I misclicked and swapped in Kareem. That's not what I wanted. <laughs> we do get the Intimidate off, so Cross Poison doesn't do a lot of damage to us. I do see what damage crunch will do taking this thing back to kind of middle yellow health and drapion has ice fang i forgot completely forgot so it does a lot of damage so i swap into bucky which is what i meant to do in the first place we tank a ice fang very very well and we take out the drapion with a surf against bertha and her ground types i kind of had a choice i could leave with tony i could leave with bucky i could leave with bob i mean there's many many options but her lead whiz cash I decided to go with Tony. Tony can fire off a quad super effective Leaf Blade, taking out the Whizcash in one turn. The only Pokemon I don't have a super effective move against with Tony is her Gliscor, which comes out next. Now, Gliscor has all of the elemental fangs, so I need to swap out, and I decide to swap in Bucky, who gets hit with Ice Fang. Unfortunately, Ice Fang freezes. What are the damn odds? We stay frozen the next turn and we get hit with an earthquake that does a significant amount of damage, but I think I can tank one more bar it being a crit, and luckily for us, we thaw out and hit the Gliscor with a quad super effective ice beam that one shots it. Out next is Hippowdon. We don't have a quad super effective move against Hippowdon, but the Golem and the Rhyperior in the back we do. Doesn't matter, however, a super effective surf is enough to take out the Hippowdon. Out comes Golem, who falls to a single quad super effective Surf, and Rhyperior falls the exact same way. Against the Fire-type Elite Four member Flint, I decided to go with Bob because we've seen Bucky in the last two battles. Now, Infernape is actually going to outspeed Bob and hit us with a Thunder Punch, so I need to set up a Dragon Dance against the Houndoom turn 1. It's not for the attack boost, it's for the speed boost. We get hit with a Dark Pulse that does a decent amount of damage, and we can fire off an Aqua Tail that cleanly one-shots the Houndoom. This brings out Infernape the next turn, and we do in fact outspeed it and take it out with a single Aqua Tail. Now some of you may be saying, hey, Aqua Tail is less than accurate. I am holding a wide lens for the boost in accuracy, and yes, if that had missed, we would have gotten hit with a Thunder Punch, but we would have tanked it. Magmortar goes down to a single Aqua Tail as well. Flareon comes out and falls to a single Aqua Tail as well. And last is Rapidash, and I don't know if I'll actually outspeed Rapidash. Sure enough, we do outspeed it, so we can take it out with a single Aqua Tail, and that is Flint gone. So the last Elite Four member is Lucian, the Psychic-type trainer. I decide to lead with Kareem against his Pokemon because we have the super effective moves Crunch and Shadow Claw. I go for the super effective move Crunch against the Mr. Mime, and it is enough to take it out. Out comes Gallade, and Crunch is not super effective, it's neutral, but Shadow Claw is super effective, and we're holding the Expert Belt, making super effective moves that much more powerful, so Gallade goes down in a single shot. This brings out Espeon. Espeon actually outspeeds us and hits us with a nasty, nasty Psychic, 
for just about half of our health, but it does go down to a single crunch. Out next is his Bronzong, and this is where things kind of go awry. I do hit the Bronzong with a Shadow Claw for a decent amount of damage, and we get hit with a Psychic that does a lot of damage down to 41 HP, so I decide to swap. I swap into my next Pokemon with Dark type moves, that is Jeff, and we get hit with a Psychic on the swap that gets a critical hit, taking us all the way down to 77 HP. Very annoying. I then swap into Tony, who tanks a Psychic pretty well, better than the other Pokemon, and I decide to fire off a neutral Drain Punch, this thing steals a Psychic, and it doesn't do much damage. We get hit with another Psychic down to 72 HP, and I hit this thing with a Leaf Blade that does decent damage despite it not being very effective. We get hit with a Psychic down to, to 12 HP, and I fire off a Drain Punch to gain back a little bit of HP, hoping we could take this thing out, but we did not. We're sitting at 27 HP as Bronzong goes for Earthquake, and I was ready to sack Tony at this point, but Tony wasn't having it. Held on at 4 HP. So, since it didn't go down, I decide we're going to let it live, and I swap into Rune. Lucian uses a full restore on the swap in, so it was a free swap, and I fire off a fire punch, and Bronzong doesn't have heat proof, so it does three quarters of its health, we get hit with a very nasty psychic, and we can take it out with one more fire punch. This brings out Alakazam, I think we can survive another psychic from this Pokemon, I don't know, and Rune holds on with 25 HP, one-shotting the Alakazam with the physical move Fire Punch. The battle against champion Cynthia is regarded as one of the hardest champion battles. She doesn't have a monotype team, she has a lot of great Pokemon, and they are very high level. Her lead Spiritomb has no weaknesses in this game, so I lead with Bucky. I'm hoping to bait out the Garchomp and take it out with Ice Beam, after we take out the Spirit Tomb. A Stab Surf does well over half of its health, and we get hit with a Shadow Ball in return that does a decent amount of damage, leaving us at 109 HP. One more Surf does take out the Spirit Tomb, and this does in fact bait out the Garchomp. We did level up, so we gain a little bit more experience, but we're outsped and taken out with a Dragon Rush. Oh, I did not expect... I didn't expect the Garchomp would outspeed us. So I decide to swap in Bob to get the Intimidate drop, and we do get hit with a Dragon Rush for just about half, and we fire off an Ice Fang against the Garchomp that does serious damage because it is quad super effective, putting it in low red health, and it gets the Freeze. This activates Garchomp Citrus Berry, pulling it out of healing range. That is phenomenal, but Cynthia withdraws Garchomp, bringing out Lucario. Lucario gets hit with an Ice Fang that doesn't do much damage, but it gets the Freeze. What are the chances of back-to-back -back Freeze? I can't do much damage with Bob, so I swap into Rune, and Lucario does stay frozen. Don't worry, friend. I am going to thaw you out the very next turn. I fire off a stab super effective fire punch that cleanly takes out Lucario. You're thawed, you're welcome. Out comes Melodic, so I swap into Tony. We tank a Surf very well and fire off a Leaf Blade that cleanly one-shots the Melodic. This baits out the Togekiss with its flying moves. I decide to stay in and fire off a super effective Thunder Punch and surprisingly it one-shots Togekiss. I I have no words. Tony, phenomenal. Rose Raid is out next, and I decide to swap into Rune, who gets hit with a Sludge Bomb on the swap that does too much damage. I stay in, I fire off a Fire Punch, and it one-shots the Rose Raid. Amazing. I can't leave Rune out because Rune is not going to take out the Garchomp, so I swap back into Bob for another Intimidate drop, and Garchomp stays frozen. I need you to stay frozen one more time, but it doesn't, and it misses Dragon Rush. I just knocked over my <laughs> drink, 
but we can take out the Garchomp with one more Ice Fang, and that beats the entire run. And we lost one Pokemon. Whew. What an amazing team, and what an amazing run. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this run. It was so much fun. It was great playing with these different Pokemon. Having a non-monotype team is a lot of fun. I do want to get back to the monotype runs, though. Pokemon Platinum is a great game. I used to not like this game that much, and as every time I do a run in it, I love it more and more. Gen 4 is just great because of the physical special split and updated movesets and things like that, so I had 10 tons of fun doing it. Now, just for context, when we first started voicing over this video, it was 8.30 in the morning. It is now 10.30 in the morning, and we are finishing out this last clip. Hopefully, we can get this thing edited and uploaded to you guys today. But to do that, I gotta quit talking, so I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, like, comment, subscribe. You guys know the routine. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for the continued support, and I will see you on the next one.